uh, and welcome to Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. Stan Osterman here, and um, this show is uh, just little old me talking to you, and it's going to be energy, but it's going to be energy that in the five and a half years I've done this show, I've never really talked about this kind of energy. I'm usually talking about batteries and hydrogen and gasoline and grids and stuff like that. But today we're going to explore a little different kind of energy that's really, really an important kind of energy, especially to me, um, because I spent 35 years of my life in the military. And that time was dedicated to protecting our country and our constitution. And in that experience, I learned a lot about governments and war and history of war and strategies in war and different kind of energies that we use um, in combat, but more so the kind of energies that we don't think about often. Um, and I'll get into that. Uh, that's a little bit of my background. I wanted to start off by giving myself a little bit of credibility by giving you a resume, but that's too long. But I can tell you that I have a bachelor's degree in graphic design, fine arts, um, which means I'm not an engineer by my bachelor's degree, um, but I am uh, on the art side of marketing, which is communication, which is another piece of the discussion we're gonna have today. I was also a police officer and a military officer and so I understand the idea of power, government power, physical power, weaponry power, things like that. And those will come into our discussion today. But we're gonna start off by talking about the, the kind of energy that we're all used to dealing with, which is the traditional form of energy. And some of the formulas, the scientific formulas, and this is real science, not the kind like we're used to on TV nowadays where we get to the theory and that's good enough for science and it becomes law. Real science, you have to take the theory and have it critically analyzed and, and um, argued. And you have to prove that with 100% certainty and 100% repeat repeatability, your theory will actually prove out and become a law. Well, the laws of energy are, are pretty cool. One is the law of thermodynamics, which says, Energy is ne neither created or destroyed. It just exists in the universe in many forms. And that energy just changes form under different conditions. So energy is all around us. It's happening all the time. And we don't always appreciate it. Um, we don't appreciate what makes the wind blow or you know, what makes the tides move and things like that. The earth has its own energy forms and that is part of natural science, and it's, it's basically following the laws of science and the laws of physics. We also have the definition of power. And a lot of people get the term energy and the term power, the words energy and power mixed up. Energy is the force, the source of how work gets done. And power is how you measure the work that energy is doing. So you can measure things by torque, by horsepower, by all different kinds of means. And that's the difference between energy and power. But they're definitely connected because you don't have power without energy. You just have a component of time and place that gives energy a form. And you can see it or calculate it or measure it in power. So the kind of energy I want to talk about today is on the personal side. It's personal energy. A lot of us don't think about the reality of us as human beings being full of energy. I know we often say sometimes we wake up in the morning and we don't have any energy or at the end of a long day, we're out of energy. Um, and we use those terms often, but we don't really, really think about what we're saying when we're out of energy or have a lot of pep and everything. So let's talk about that a little bit. Personal energy comes in basically two forms, and I'm not saying only two forms, but the two forms that I wanna really talk about mostly today are physical energy, 
So you eat a candy bar, you can do more barbells or more running or whatever, because you've got more calories in you and you're burning those calories with water and air and providing the energy to move your muscles, to give you the power to run or the power to lift weight. And that power is pretty well understood by everybody. And it's important. Everything that we do, even our heart beating and our lungs breathing, um, everything subconsciously, our body already regulates our, um, our energy and gives us the power to breathe and to beat our heart and things like that. And we don't even think about it. But we do have to think about the food we eat and get the right kind of food. And certainly it's proven pretty well that if you eat the right kind of foods and you keep yourself healthy and exercise, um, you live a much better life because you're really controlling that energy that's in you. The other kind of energy that we think about even less is your mental energy. Um, a lot of people don't really think about it, but you're watching me on ThinkTech or on YouTube or Vimeo, and your eyes are taking in wavelengths of light, and your ears are taking in sound waves, including my stupid rooster in the background. And your brain is turning those things into signals that your brain translates into an image of me talking to you about energy. And that complex electrochemical reaction is energy into brain power into potentially action if you are moved to move your muscles if i tell you to raise your hand or something you know it's it's there and it's real but we don't think about it much but it's also really powerful the third concept besides the personal energy and the traditional energy there's actually like a community energy. Um, when people get together, people who think alike or people who want to do something together to, to reach a goal, or in the military case, an army or an air force uh, or a navy, um, when, they, when they organize their personal energy and maybe mix it with kinetic energy or you know, weapons and things, then they do things on large scales that are monumental. I mean, when you think about the kind of things that, that construction workers can do when they're given a bunch of steel and they take a bunch of electrical energy and mechanical energy and manpower and they put it all together with the, the thinking power, the brain power of engineers and designers, and they build huge skyscrapers that are just unbelievable. And, and not just modern buildings, but go back to the Roman aqueducts and things. If you've ever traveled through Europe and seen what the community power can do when a bunch of people get together and work together to move heavy objects and build them in, in a manner that uh, makes things just incredibly strong and useful, like aqueducts that move water hundreds of miles. It's, it's really amazing that the human power, the brain power and the physical power can have that much influence on culture and on society and what we do every day. And the last element that I wanted to talk about is government energy and government power. When you take the civilized group that I just talked about that all has a common direction and they all work together using their energy to do what they think is important because they all have a common uh, thinking or common, common thinking energy, you can do amazing things. And we as humans tend to be social animals. And we realize that in groups that are thinking alike, we can get a lot done. So we've kind of developed this concept called government where we can let the government think about some of the things that like, like our inner body, our heart and our lungs do, that kind of run stuff. And we don't have to worry about that as people. We let the government run that and we, we trust them and they take care of it, and we can do other things ourselves. So in our country, the government's power is, is designed in our constitution. And in our constitution, we have certain rights, like the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments in the constitution, that guarantee us certain things like free speech and freedom of religion and freedom of the press. So we, we have uh, 
so many things outlined in a fairly concise and small document, the Constitution of the United States, that basically sets up our government and tells, puts the limits on the power that our government has over us as individuals and communities. So it's important to understand that our government is different from virtually any other government that's ever existed. And our constitution is what makes it different. Our constitution says this government is of, by, and for the people, meaning that the government operates with the consent of the people that it governs. And that concept we take for granted, but in almost all of history, people didn't have a choice of who their government was. It was either a king or a Caesar, or it was some, some pirate or benevolent dictator that ran your country. You were born into it, you probably died into it, or you fought a war and somebody else took over and you ended up being in their government, under their government. But in our country, for the first time in history, we set up a republic based on the, our constitution that gives the people, the people are the government. And we do that by electing representatives to take care of the government business for us within the framework of the constitution so that we don't have to spend all of our time worrying about government. And how does that really relate back to energy? And why? People always used to ask me when I was in uniform, what makes America so powerful? And for a long time, I really couldn't answer them. But there's that word again, power. I finally figured it out. What makes America powerful is freedom. Freedom. If you have a free society, if you have free men, free men and free women. And the government is set up to let them be free. You have much more thinking going on. You have people who will use their physical strength and their mental energy to get so many things done. It freedom creates the, fr the creativity in artists. Freedom gives the entrepreneurs the drive and the energy to succeed and business, businessmen to succeed. Freedom lets you be a thinker and lets you think things instead of just following rules. And it maximizes the energy potential that all the individuals and all the communities have in a free society. The problem is that we're so comfortable with freedom and we're so comfortable with the way our society is set up, that we don't think about what was paid to get that freedom. As a military man, I can tell you the price is horrendous. And we also often talk about, hey, we, we owe a debt of gratitude to our veterans and to our first responders. Yes, we do. But sometimes it almost sounds like lip service to those people, because people have died, given up all of their futures for the freedom gives us the ability to think and to do things that no other country can do. That's why places like China and North Korea can't come up with their own innovations. They have to steal them from the United States because they don't have freedom. They don't have that ability. Their people can't exercise releasing their internal thinking energy and stuff into innovation. They're in structure. They are following government around when government says. And that's the difference between our country and other countries that are under communism or totalitarianism or picureism. Having a free country releases the personal and community energy in every one of us. And if you don't have it, if you're living in a totalitarian state, if you're living under Kim Jong-un, say, in North Korea, those people, all they know is government. The government takes care of them. The government watches over them. And all they do is what the government tells them to do. There's not a whole lot of creativity involved. There's a small handful of people at the top. 
to do any of the thinking that's needed to design something or build something. And everybody else is just grunt labor. Quite frankly, that's all there is. But those people are so dedicated to their government, to their leader, their dear leader, as they call him, that they would die for that, that man because he's all there is in the world. There is no God. There is no past. There's only today and the, lead, the dear leader. And that's their life. Their physical and their mental energy is limited. Their power in relation to helping shape their government is non-existent. They are tools of the government and that's all they are. So we have a responsibility in this country, a responsibility to use our personal energy and our community energy to make sure that our nation stays free, that our freedom is protected. When you're a military officer or you're a senior level civil servant in this nation, like you're a member of Congress, or the, the inauguration just happened, President of the United States, I can, I can probably quote you the, the oath you have to take. I state your name, you solemnly swear or affirm to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign or domestic, that I will obey the orders of the president and the, or the individuals above me. I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office I'm about to enter. So help me God. That's the oath of office that every civil servant, senior civil servant particularly, and every military person takes. The oaths differ a little bit between officers and enlisted. But that's the oath. And it's not to a person. It's not to a president. It's not to a Congress. It's not to a judge. It's to a piece of paper, the US Constitution, that the rules that are in there are the things that keep us free. So I just wanted to put out there for all of you to really think about what gives us the ability to switch to a hydrogen economy or to get rid of fossil fuels. It's that energy inside of everybody, particularly those in a free society that can think and do it. And living in a free society, we have a responsibility to protect and defend the constitution of this nation so that we can remain free and use our personal energy and use our community energy for all kinds of good. For good inside our country to take care of our own people and for the good of other countries that look to us for help, guidance, and our thinking, our best thinking. So I hope that uh, this is gonna be kind of a short show. I'm gonna wrap it up here. I hope that you'll really take uh, this to heart, that you understand uh, how important your own personal health is and your own personal energy and how you apply it and where you use it because the rest of the, of the United States is depending on you and the rest of the world is depending on the United States to remain free. So that's gonna do it for Stan the Energy Man today. I thank you for being with me and I'll see you next week where I have uh, one of our Think Tech co-hosts, uh, Kali'i Akina, who is gonna join me and we're gonna talk about energy in Hawaii and energy as it impacts our economy. So until next Tuesday, and I'll be doing that from the Big Island, aloha.